Good morning. morning. 11 bells, 11 uh, o'clock time to come together and worship as we do this morning. Welcome to all, especially uh, any guests that we have worshiping with us. And I see at least a couple. I'm not going to ask them to stand because I know who they are, but it's good to have them with us this morning. God is good. And just a couple of announcements before worship. Uh, Starting um, next Sunday, a new member class, we're calling it Discover Concordia. We'll be meeting in the, uh, the cafeteria immediately after our first service at 9 o'clock. It'll meet from 10 until 10.45. It is also uh, uh, important to remember next Sunday, we have a special guest preacher, Pastor Corey Christians, who is a member here now serving in Texas, and he will be here next Sunday for uh, our homecoming. So homecoming, we'll have our same services at 9 and 11, and then we'll have a, a little gathering afterwards for uh, that celebration of homecoming. So a lot of other things going on. Please be aware in your uh, highlights of the things that we are involved in here at church. So with that, we are here to worship, and we stand to sing our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, 
and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant to us, your humble servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our minds on the things that are right and, by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the 15th Sunday after Pentecost is from Ezekiel chapter 33. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall not give them warning from me. You shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from his way. That wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. 
But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, but you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from Romans chapter 13. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes to whom taxes are owed, revenue to whom revenue is owed, respect to whom respect is owed, honor to whom honor is owed. Owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depths of the sea. Woe to the world for temptations to sin, for it is necessary that temptations come. But woe to the one by whom the temptation comes. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven, for the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man had a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more 
than over the 99 that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault, between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. The text for the message this morning is from the Gospel lesson recorded in the 18th chapter of St. Matthew. Give me your hand when I've lost the way. Give me your shoulder to cry on. Whether the day is bright or gray, give me your heart to rely on. Send me the warmth of a secret smile to show me you haven't forgotten. For always and ever, now and forever, little things mean a lot. Some of you may recognize that as a popular song back in the 1950s. And it conveys for us this morning a sentiment that Jesus speaks of, that little things do mean a lot. 
It starts off with a question for Jesus by his disciples. Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? It's important to note the error of the disciples right from the beginning that comes in this question because time and again Jesus had told them that the kingdom of heaven was not to be considered something physical, something to be grasped. It was not some grand spectacle. In fact, just the opposite as they will find out. The kingdom of heaven is the the reigning of Jesus in the hearts of those who trust him as Savior. But at this time, at least for the disciples, that's too difficult for them to comprehend. They were looking for some plain, concrete evidence about who was the greatest. To that, Jesus brings before their eyes, right into their midst, a child. A very small child. Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. So greatness then in the kingdom of heaven has nothing to do with size or strength or intellect or earthly wisdom or wealth. Greatness in the eyes of Jesus has everything to do with humble dependence, like that of a little child. So as we consider our place in the kingdom, we're going to understand that little things do mean a lot. The 18th chapter seems to throw a lot at us fairly large topics, we might even say. Greatness in the kingdom of heaven. Temptations to sin. Parable of lost sheep. Sins against each other in the body of Christ, the church. So we are briefly going to consider these seemingly detached topics with an understanding that a little child, a little sin, a little wandering, and a little offense are in fact connected. Little things mean a lot. So starting with the question going back to the disciples, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Why did they even ask? I think we know why they asked. There was almost an understanding from them, Jesus, who's the greatest in the kingdom? It's me, right? Or at least, in a little wider sense, me and and this group of close friends. We're your favorite. We're the greatest. Just tell us what we already know. We do that, don't we? We want to know who the greatest is, the greatest athlete, the greatest president. But the disciples were asking for a different reason. It was pride. A little pride. Isn't that what we read in Scripture comes before a fall? And they do fall. In that moment, their pride is squashed by a little child. A little child is brought before them, and their pride is just crushed because Jesus says, you're not the greatest. Let me show you an example, a little child who receives things in total dependence. A little pride? No. A little child who has no pride. A little child who has only dependence on what others give. Are we dependent in our pride? Do we look to Jesus and come to him and throw our pride, our sinful pride aside and in humility and total dependence be embraced by Christ and his love? Because that's what God has done for us. He's embraced us. He's called us. He's forgiven us. 
with the understanding that we still have that temptation to sin. A little pride, yes. But sin, and Jesus says it's even necessary. Meaning, it's, it's inevitable. We can't live in this world without it. But what are we called on in this world to do? What does the world say? The world says, have a little self-reliance. You can do this. And that too will fail. For the same reason that pride causes us to fall, self-reliance fails because of sin. Sin wants what it wants. It is that old sinful self that gives in and then convinces itself that it's strong enough to come up against that next temptation. And when failure comes once again, where do we turn? We turn once again to the one who calls us, who embraces us, who gifts us, and that Holy Spirit is with us. So that in times of that sinful self-reliance, we have what God gives to us, a little self-control. Being the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. A little pride, a little self-reliance tainted in sin, the self-control that God gives to us that allows us to resist the temptation and yet do we not wander. A little wandering A little wandering of sheep is a dangerous thing because sheep are not strong, sheep are not tough. And a sheep that is alone is in terrible danger, as we are when we wander from the fellowship. We are the sheep of the pasture. We are the sheep in the fold of the good shepherd. And yes, the temptations to sin will lead us to wander from his side. And yet rejoicing comes when Jesus goes and rescues one, brings them back, plants them once again in the grand sheepfold to rejoice together. A little pride, a little self-reliance, a little wandering, brought back into the sheepfold. Why? because there will be at times a little offense, a disunity in the body of Christ. No, all those things, all those little things that we talk about add up to big things. But the biggest thing that comes into the midst of those little things is the biggest thing that God could have ever done, and that is to rescue us. And the biggest event of all history is the cross of Jesus Christ that covers all those sins, the little sins that build up, we bring them to the cross. Because in the cross, they are conquered. They are covered. They are forgiven. It's that big thing that comes to us little children of God so that we understand now the beauty of God's forgiveness and our place in the kingdom of heaven. Little things mean a lot. Just by way of illustration, I brought a couple things. One of them's with me all the time, but this one, this is a stole that my sister made for me many, many years ago. And I've never worn it because it's kind of small. It's a little stole. It's beautiful, but I've never worn it because it's, it's kind of small. We like the big ones, right? But this little stole means more to me because of where it came from. A little thing that means a lot. The wedding ring. That's a little, little thing. It's my third one, only one wife, but third ring. I've lost two of them. This one doesn't come off. 
but it's a constant reminder, a little thing that means so much. And when we consider ourselves not more highly than we ought, then we realize that we have a place in God's kingdom. We have a role in God's kingdom. We have a blessing to serve in God's kingdom, to live that life of faith. So I close with an interesting, I think, illustration. Because for 20 plus years now, I've done a children's message at the end of every summer. Thankfully, I can do it once again this year. I will probably be doing it soon, Lord willing, because I am 60 years old and have never been stung by a bee. I have played baseball in fields of clover and never once been stung by a bee. I assume it's one of two reasons. Maybe the Lord is protecting me and I might be allergic, or more likely he knows I'm a sissy and I couldn't stand the pain. But think about the little bee. The average bee, the little honey bee, lives three to four months and then his life is over. He may produce one tablespoon of honey in his lifetime. I looked this up. For a little nine ounce jar of honey, 1,500 bees will fly 60,000 miles and visit over two million flowers to produce one little nine ounce jar of honey. And then their life is done. Imagine the bee on his calendar at home. He's got this little skull and crossbone. He knows his days are numbered. What else can bees do besides make honey? They can sting. Imagine that bee looking at the calendar and saying, you know what, I've never stung anybody. Maybe I'll not do the flower thing today. Maybe I'll go and see what it's like to hurt somebody. setting aside what he was called to do in order to hurt. And we have that ability. That's not our calling. Our calling is to be the body of Christ, to do what we are called to do. Do we have the ability to sting? Absolutely. But God calls us to live in loving service to each other. And even when we fall, even when we fail, even when our words hurt, there is restoration, there is forgiveness, and there is that next day. And that's what God gives to us in this moment. He gives us that reassurance that all those little things have been covered in the blood of Christ, and we now have that blessing to be his representatives in this place, but especially in our world. May we be faithful to that calling. To the glory of God, and in the name of Jesus, amen. Please stand. In the peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. We join together now confessing our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray now for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have sent pastors to be watchmen. Let them be ever faithful in their callings to call sinners to repentance and joyfully announcing your forgiveness to those who heed that call. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Father, fill us with care for the members of our earthly families and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Forgive our sins and strengthen us so that we would owe no one anything except to love one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O righteous God, you give leaders to every nation. Grant us good and wise public servants to bear the sword righteously, defending the innocent and punishing wrongdoers. Guard those who protect us, especially our armed forces, our police, our firefighters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, look with compassion upon those who are struggling with illness, with injuries, with grief, with loneliness, and all sorts of maladies. Remembering this day, Sydney, Peggy, Stephen, Harold, and Donna. For Kay and Nilza, Irvin, Renee, Bobby, Joe, and Ronald. For Mary and H.Y., Randy, Eli, Greg, and Jerry, Jose, Mark, Robert, and Leanne. For those, Lord, we name before you silently in our hearts. Reassure them, O oh Lord, of your love, which is like that of the shepherd who seeks and saves the lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, grant that we would receive Christ's body and blood with childlike faith. Let us humbly trust that your forgiveness is poured out for us in this sacrament. May it strengthen us in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, because you desire that none of your little ones should perish, and because sin is constantly crouching at our door, we beg you to call us back to yourself when we are tempted to stray. Deliver us from temptation and keep us in the true faith, making us humble like little children, seeing how your Son humbled himself for us and for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We bless you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us assurance of your fatherly care and to keep us from despair over our sins. Assure us of your continuing presence with and among us. Grant that our eating of his holy body and drinking of his precious blood at your table Strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, that with joyful hearts we may bring forth offerings acceptable to you at all times and in all places. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> the peace of the Lord be with you always. We share now with each other that sign of God's peace.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith until life everlasting. Depart in God's peace. Amen. We pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace.